Welcome to the second part of my talk on using DNA to solve unknown parentage cases. Uh, this part of the talk is going to discuss the many tools that are available to you. Again, a housekeeping slide. Here's the URL with the slides for this presentation. They're online, they're public. I, all my slides are always kept at slides.com slash Kitty Cooper. And to introduce myself again, if you missed the first part of the talk, I'm a blogger about genetics and genealogy, and I have uh, many posts on the subject of solving unknown parentage cases. Let's talk about those tools. There are lots and lots of automated tools to help you uh, use DNA for this figure, to figure out these parentage cases. These are my favorites. GWorks, my very favorite, from dnagedcom.com. You can build a database of all the ancestral names in your matches trees using GWorks. DNA to tree, mind boggling. It will build trees from the common ancestors it finds for you. Of course, that only works if people have trees. Then clustering has really made it easy to figure out which people group together. And just about every site has clustering in some form or other. The first one to get it up out there was Genetic Affairs and they're integrated to MyHeritage. But all of these sites have that clustering ability. There's some techniques you ought to know about as well. My favorites are the McGuire method, and I'm going to use it when I show you in a, a sample case, and the Leeds method. Now remember, if you go to my slides, all of these URLs are linked, plus in my syllabus, I have all these URLs as well. One other tool that lots of people love I don't personally use it much myself, is the what are the odds tool at DNA Painter. You can use that to check your theories. Here's a, here's a blog post that talks about it in detail, or go to the DNA Geeks site and read what she says about it. All right, GWorks. Why do I love GWorks? Because a database often tells me a great deal. So I don't have time to go into all the details of how to use it today. So I send you to this blog post and you can always send me questions by email or come to my chat room after this talk. If you were at my first talk, do you remember Tessa? Okay, now I sort of glossed over how I figured out her ancestors were the early Spanish settlers of New Mexico. But if you look at this and look at those numbers, Look at how many trees have these same ancestors. Baca, Pablo Antonio Baca, uh, Vajeos, Bernardo, Montoya, uh, Gallegos, Chavez. I mean, all of these ancestors are people I recognized from my time in New Mexico as being the early settlers of that state. So, and if you see that there are 40, 20, you know, all the, all the trees that have these people in them, what does that tell you? That they're endogamous, endogamy, that you might have, for example, Pablo Antonio Baca in your tree five or six times as an ancestor. Let's look at another case that we use GWorks for. Jane didn't, was looking for her unknown both her unknown parents, but we sort of knew who her mother was. Her father, her paternal side, she had a third cousin match. Now, third cousin matches are a bit dubious because it's not that close. If you remember my G trick from the first talk, that's three Gs, so great, great grandparents in common. So, but this thing about this third cousin is unlike many people on Ancestry, she had a really great tree. And what's more, she was happy to help. So could GWorks tell us which, which set of great, great grandparents they shared? Let's see. 
Well, we ran a G-Works and these are some of the names we came up with. These are the top ancestors in the, in the trees that, for Jane. Do you see any names on the right that are also on the left? I'll give you a minute. Coleman Cranford, William Sims Pratt. Oh, and look, their children married. We got it. That is where the trees meet. So what do we do next? Here is where I use the McGuire method. This is kind of an abbreviation version, but what I did is I looked at all the DNA descendants of that couple. Pratt, the Pratt Cranford marriage has eight children and I look to see the matches. And what do I see? Higher numbers for the people descended from child B. And what else do I see? That's where our third cousin is. And that would be, child B would be her great grandparent. Actually, that is her mother there. So it would be our, our, our Millie's daughter's great, great grandparent. So that all works. Then looking at this, uh, child D had, her spouse had their surname in our new, in our nice database multiple times. So we decided to look at those three children of child D and thankfully our third cousin was in touch with several of them and we talked one of them into testing a likely, a likely parent to our Jane and look what happened. Targeted testing is often the way to go, although, you know, more often you're going to get a cousin that actually hit the right parent right away. But this was a very, very exciting. And Jane is terrific and she's happy. What about clustering? Well, I can do a whole talk on clustering, so I am not going to go into detail. But look at this beautiful display. This cluster here is, uh, is the clustering from DNA GEDCOM. And I have a blog post about that one. And this clustering here is from GEDmatch. And I have a blog post about that one with more about all the other tools. So the thing to know is that it's a visual grouping of matches that are in common with each other, which can lead you to know which group belongs to which set of great grandparents and is very helpful when you're determining a case or even in your own genealogy. In my case, my great great granddad doesn't, uh, his father is clearly not really his father and I was able to find a group with clustering to pursue. DNA to tree is really a game changer for people doing unknown parentage work. When someone showed it to me at the, at the Jamboree in uh, Southern California, on their iPhone, my jaw dropped. And uh, when I got home, I went out and bought an iPad. Unfortunately, for you can only use it on iPhones and iPads. It was supposedly going to be converted to an Android, but I haven't seen that happen yet. The URL for DNA Dreamers is at the bottom. Uh, this is really just an amazing tool. OK, what it does is it will actually find the common ancestors for you. Of course, this does require that your matches have good trees, which is not always the case. So first you load the matches after you've logged in and selected a profile, and then you set it to work on common ancestors. And you it's really quite fast. It'll only do, if you notice on the left under, under pages there, I have pages set to four. Uh, it, you don't want to overwhelm ancestry, they get upset, but it paces itself properly. I sometimes set that pages to six, if it's still available. It might have been turned off by now. Um, after you've done the find common ancestors, you get a listing something like this. And you then have to, you have to compress them. So this is just all the ancestors, but some of them will be repeated. So, or be, it, it, notice the repeating usernames. Of course, I privatize them. So you have to click the here be dragons. What a great, what a great line. So you have to merge the common ancestors. And here 
this is a real case that, that we solved. It was a case where I really didn't think we had much hope because she had the best she had on her father's side were fourth cousin matches. And that just usually doesn't fly. But fortunately, on her Australian side, there were lots of deep trees and we were able to identify this common ancestor, uh, Thomas Bugden. And this shows you the details. All of these are these are distant cousins and fourth cousins. Pretty amazing to have found a common ancestor there. And then when you click on build tree, it built this tree. See the icons it uses, possible most recent common ancestor. And then it shows you, it, it, it's really quite nice, but it doesn't have all the descendants of Thomas Bugden. And you can see that because it has what's in the trees and Elizabeth is in there twice. So we had to do some work on this tree. Yeah, look at all those children. So when we actually worked on Thomas Bugden, by the way, he was born 1811 in England and then was uh, exported to uh, Australia. And these are all the, all his children. That's gonna be way too many descendants. So I was able to recruit an Australian search angel and um, it, the ethnicity helped us sort out the, the lines in the tree. You can read all about it in this blog post. But we, thanks to DNA to Tree, we had somewhere to start and we actually were able to solve this case, which I, I didn't expect to solve. So my current approach to this kind of work, I almost always start a GED match and I start with the are your parents related tool because Often, if you're working with an adoptee, uh, they are they are the result of an interfamily affair, and that's why they were adopted out. Not not as often, not that often, but too often for comfort. Then I looked at their matches. Typically, I start with ancestry, but I also look at my heritage and 23andMe. Are there any close matches, like a half sibling, a cousin, a first cousin? You can usually figure out right away. And again, I sent you to DNA adoption uh, from my first talk to look at the contact um, suggestions there if you have that close a match. But if you have a couple of second cousins, you can build their trees and figure it out yourself quite often. And still, you still haven't had to use any of the cool tools I discussed here. When you're stuck working with third and fourth cousin matches, I do suggest you try a DNA to tree. And sometimes that will turn up for you common ancestors that you can build a tree down from. Doesn't always, not if people have terrible trees or don't have trees, that won't happen for you, but it's really a great tool. And uh, the other thing, I really like to get that database from GWorks of all the ancestors in all the trees to see who comes out as a top hit. And once you have common ancestors, you build the trees down and you're looking for where your trees intersect. So that's my summary of the tools. Didn't go into a lot of detail, but there's lot, lots and lots of details on my blog. I hope this helps you in your research. And it's been lovely talking with you today. Good luck. <laughs>